Jesus told us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and teach them to obey my commands. For I am with you always. Our primary goals are to evangelize nations of the earth, disciple new believers, plant churches, and continuously share the benefits of the gospel, our passion, transforming lives, have working relationships, growing teams, expanding strategies, advancing church, do you want to be a part? It's a mission that is possible. Once again, we welcome you to Global Partners Caribbean Mission TT, the World Missions Department of the Wesleyan Holiness Church in the Caribbean. And we say to you, welcome and good night to everyone. We thank you for joining us tonight. And once again, we want to thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. We say with the psalmist, David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Name. We bless God because He's great and He's greatly to be praised. Brother Burgess, welcome. Welcome, thank you. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I'm glad to be here tonight to listen to this fantastic week of child protection, pandemic or epidemic. Yes, yes. But first of all, we want to open it up with a prayer. So, could you open us in prayer, please? Our Father in heaven, we thank you tonight. We pray, God, that we ask God that. You would just bless this night, bless this day. We said, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done tonight. Just have your will be done. We pray for all our guests tonight and participants that you will bless them and abundantly. Yes. We pray that you will give insights on all the listeners from all through the Caribbean, through the world that are listening that, oh God, this critical and important topic, we pray that we will bring hope we ask you, dear God, to intervene. We ask you and we cry upon you, O oh God, so that you will just intervene in these sessions and there'll be, be healing, there'll be hope, there'll be strength. So we ask that you help Dr. Bridges tonight and help us all tonight, Lord, as we go through these sessions. Remember those who are coming on, um, we pray that you release the trans, the, 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 or everything, the transportation, the the internet speeds and everything that you'll control and yes. take full control. In Jesus' name we pray. Have your own way tonight, dear God. Amen. 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 So this week we have been focusing on child protection. And we, we have had really a wonderful week. We've dealt with a number of areas. Uh, we started out and um on sunday night yeah we yes. a, and we asked the question pandemic or right That's okay. and we have been dealing with the theme child sexual abuse and neglect is it a pandemic or epidemic and we've looked at different areas uh on each of the nights on monday night we looked at the role of the church and civil society on tuesday night we looked again at the the, the the, how could we minister to a hurting generation? And then last night we were looking at the role of parents because yeah. we recognize that everyone has a part to play in this issue if you're going to be able to deal with it. But don't forget Sunday yes. night. That was procedures. Yes. Procedures. Oh, yes. And then on Sun Sunday we, night. We started first Sun of all on Sunday night yeah. oh. and looking at the importance of um, having child protection a child protection policy and procedures in place in our institutions that deal with children, all about child-based institutions or schools, 
our faith-based organizations and churches or sporting organizations, all organizations with children. And um, we were considering the significance and the, the necessity for having um, policies in place. Oh, well, and, and I, thought, I think that Monday conversation was so important because it spoke to the fact that what we need, we need compulsory child protection policies. Um, and we were examining that. That was very important because, you know, the law has to be has to, for it to, for it to be um for it to be um implemented yes um the law must be compulsory like in all the major developed countries across the world so that we have a dragnet as it were through the countries I, I thought that discussion was very important and I, I, um we know the challenges in the Caribbean islands with finance etc mm -hmm. but we believe that um there comes that that time one of the things that came out to me carefully is that we must not treat the children like a side dish anymore yes they are not Sunday school and youth must be the prime the prime focus of the churches the prime people it's amazing how time has changed when we went to the church i can remember going to the church in the 60s youth and Sunday school were the prime focus i mean everybody focused on youth it was the biggest department the Sunday school was a big, large thing, and somewhere along the line, we yeah. lost it. Yes, and the focus changed to internally to themselves, and it has not done the church well. Well, and and in fact, um, like in in our days, I think that that helped to make such a critical, it played a critical role in our lives as young people. Yeah, yeah. yes, our involvement in in the different church activities, Sunday school, and all those mm -hmm. different things. And we had, well, we didn't have an official policy in terms of the country, but we had, we had, um, you know, rules and regulations in those days. We called it the rules and regulations for the different for camps and different things. Yeah, but and, it, yeah, it yes. tells us how much things have changed in the twentieth, yeah. twenty-first century. And just imagine we are discussing policy and policy in a church, the things we are seeing in the Protestant churches. Um, it's just horrific. And of course, Jesus warned us in Timothy that in the last days, these are the kinds of things we're going to see. Yes. Um, but that this onslaught on the children, on one children, right, it's, 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 really, it's really pathetic, it's demonic. And we're going to fight a good fight. That's right. We're fight a good fight. And so, hence the reason why we, we, we found it necessary to have this series. And, and tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing and we. we we are on the topic tonight, child sexual abuse and neglect pandemic or epidemic, the role of education in religious institutions, colleges, and schools in the implementation of compulsory child protection policies. And we have some educators and, and education officials with us on tonight. We'll be having a team of educators, persons who are actually in the field and we are going to be discussing this topic with them. And first of all, we we, we want to welcome on the set tonight, uh, Reverend Dr. Ol Oliver, Anthony Oliver. Oliver. Welcome, Dr. Oliver. <laughs> you are, I, I, you are I, muted. Good, Unmute your mic. Good, good evening, everyone. Thank you so good much. Good evening. And nice good to evening. have you on with us tonight. And we also have on set Sister Seth Tronella Young coming to us out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Welcome, Sister Seth Tronella Young. Good evening to everyone. Thank you for inviting me and having me to this discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on. And we want to... Uh, well, you know, we are so happy to have you. It is the first time we've had uh, Sister Young, she she is a teacher. She's in the the field of education, and she currently serves as a Christian Education Director in the Wesleyan Holiness District of Saint Vincent. Uh, she she enjoys teaching Sunday school and everything else about Sunday school. She's a member of the Georgetown Wesleyan Holiness Church. Sister Young started teaching in 1997 so she's a very experienced teacher she's a trained teacher she has a bachelor of education 
in literacy. She also has a master of science in instructional design in wow. education. And she enjoys teaching English literature, remediation, teaching and design and technology. And she's currently teaching at one of their rural secondary schools in St. Vincent. Sister, Sister uh, Young also makes a presence felt and makes a contribution in the areas of Girl Guides yeah, that's in St. Vincent, the Girl Guides Association. She's a local trainer and a guider for the first George, Georgetown Girl Guides Company. Thank you so much, Sister yeah. Young, for your contribution in the area, in the area of education and in volunteering your services, even in the Girl Guide, one of the, um, the, the groups dealing with children. And I'm sure tonight when um, Dr. Oliver heard her, uh, her, her the qualification and master of instructional design, yes. I know he took out his notebook and he put on his notes <laughs> because we we have so many um, qualified Christians across the region yes. that can help us in the different things that we have to do. Yes. And what I like about this, um, about that this profile showed us is volunteerism, which is the way to go. Yes, that's right. I, and I trust that um, Graduate School of Theology um, will introduce a lot more volunteerism yes. into the whole issue of teaching and, yes. um, of its work, but that is for Dr. Oliver. And Dr. Oliver is a regular on our show. When yes. we interviewed Dr. Oliver, we, we heard that he is now the president of CETA, the Caribbean Evangelical Theolo Theological Association. <laughs> And Dr. Oliver has been in this field for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, he has also been in that field in, at, on the Graduate School of Theology, Caribbean Graduate School of Theology, as well as the Caribbean Nazarene College. He has been the Dean uh, of Education there. And Dr. Oliver is very experienced in the field. He has been a pastor for a number of years and so he's an expert well 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 to attain president of CETA of CETA yes. the accredited agency for Bible colleges um uh, we have been introducing dr Oliver. He's, he's part of the family he's part of the family um and he has been with us and he has been due um for the childhood your first television interview oh yes when uh, you first um, started when you first started on yes. tv6 yes it was i always cherish that the first it was dr Oliver and yourself who had that first, that first interview. interview. That's all if you remember that. <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, I do. Thank right. you. Yes, great. Yeah, so thanks again for your, your interest and your continued support in this field. So we welcome you on again tonight. So tonight we want to, to start with an an a uh, question and looking at the in, in the context of the upsurge in child maltreatment globally because last night we were talking about we were talking about the upsurge that there is in child sexual abuse right and uh the explosion we also looked at the explosion of online abuse of children particularly in the covid 19 pandemic and also the almost a hundred percent increase in child sexual abuse in certain regions such that uh, child sexual abuse has been classified by some as a pandemic itself because, and in that it has affected even more people than the COVID-19 wow. pandemic. Such is the, is the uh, extent and, and the, of, of child sexual abuse. And also in the context of, of the fact that in the scriptures, uh, Jesus Christ himself identified the child as central to the kingdom the most important in the kingdom. And therefore, it means that what he was, he was pointing out, the fact that the ministry to children should be the central part of our ministry in the church. Because he said, of such is the kingdom of heaven. Yet some, so many times we tend to have children as a side dish rather than having them as the central aspect of our, our ministry. And so in the context of what's happening to children and all the destruction, and as we look at, at, at the impact, the kind of impact that it is having across, uh, around the world, 
regionally and globally in terms of the level of of crime and delinquency and 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 you know different things that we yeah. are seeing recently on our television we have been seeing so many school fights children fighting after school and and even you know person children being killed and so on as a result of all of this um all of this the crime and the, the, the rage that seems to be out there. So in the context of all of this, first of all, I, I want to start with Sister Young. In terms of dealing, how are, how are schools and um, the, the dealing with this upsurge, this upsurge in, in juvenile behavior, juvenile delinquency, and the different things that are happening in our schools today? How how is it being addressed from your experience? From my experience, I think that right now we are like being thrown back to the drawing board as to what do we do? Mm -hmm. At my institution, they are not institution, they are not a lot of fights. However, when they do occur, we, we tend to just respond by putting them on suspension. Right. And we we are at the point because we are just about getting ready to close. But we are in deep discussion at various segments of our school administration, various segments of teachers, trying to put something in place that would be more effective. And if more effective in that, we feel that the suspension is not working. It's not working because the children are coming from homes where. The type of nurturing that they may have had when I was a youth, they don't have it. Mm -hmm. So we realize that we need to not only come to school to educate only, but we have to come to nurture. We have to come to teach things that the students are not getting at home because we are extremely frustrated. Oh. And so we are kind of, we are trying not to throw our hands in the air. We are trying to find different methods to help our students. So at our school, we deal with it with suspension at this point, or if we thought that the fight is not as major, we may have a little talking to or spending some time with the counselor or a teacher who may step in to address the matter. But at this point, we really need to go back to the drawing board to be able to help mm -hmm. our students because they are in need of them. Right. So do you all have um, other trained personnel attached to the school, social workers or counselors or things like that? I'm talking in general in your schools and in, in, um, in your education system. In general, there is the counselor for the schools. Most secondary schools I know have counselors. The primary, sometimes they have to share the secondary school counselor in that particular area. Sometimes you may have the truancy officer dropping by, but sometimes we kind of resort to the police, but we don't. I am not aware. I, I live in the rural area and I teach at a rural secondary school, so I know we lean mostly on our counselor, our in house counselor, to help with the fights. But as I said, we don't have a lot of fights, but they, we've had some and we, we get them from time to time. Right. Yeah, we need to thank God for St. Vincent. Yes. Uh, that, remember the time when we didn't have fights? Just like St. Vincent? Yes. And, and we need to pray that um, that God, God will continue to interview and, and help, help there. Because, so, yeah. So, Dr. Oliver, what is, what is your perspective regarding the, the level of almost explosion, as it were, that we are seeing in our society today? among our young people and our, you know, and our, our students and so on. What, what, what is your perspective on that? Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. Our sister, uh, Sister Tranella Young, who is in the school system in St. Vincent, has pointed out part of the problem is the increased dysfunction in families. Mm -hmm. um, before... Uh, more persons were involved in helping to discipline. There were uh, certain standards, certain types of behavior that would not, would have been disapproved of mm -hmm. in the community as, as a whole. Um, yes. Aunts and uncles and people who are in the community 
could have corrected children. Um, uh, if a child uh, misbehaved and they were spoken to by the teacher and the parents knew that, that child would be reprimanded severely at home. Or even somebody who was respected in the community, if they observed it. You know, and more and more there is this sense of um, a sort of a radical individualism where some parents say, well, I, I am the only one to correct my children. Yes. And things break down because of fatherlessness in the home, visiting parents, visiting um, persons coming in and so forth. So there's this general breakdown and children are also dealing with their own issues that we sometimes don't recognize. And so they sometimes uh, pass, uh, take all their frustration on other children. And um, two, I think the whole issue of the, the type of things they view in terms of the extreme violence right. in our movies. The, the, the problem is on the movies, the stars come back, those who die, um, you see them in another movie, you know, there's gone, a lot of gun violence in some of the movies coming in from the United States and the Western world. And even some of the things that we are producing uh, when we do produce things. So it, it seems as though it's acceptable. The problem is they don't realize that when people are injured, we saw recently that one student slashed another one in the face, right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. you know? And um, and most of these things now are captured and videotaped and put instant uh, shortly thereafter on Facebook and and other things. And there are some people who think, well, that that person is a, a hero, which they're not really a hero because if they continue like that, their life will be uh, in serious trouble. They end up um, already they might be uh, disciplined, and then they may end up being in one of the youth facilities where they're incarcerated because they are not behaving properly. So their lives are dogged with all sorts of issues and they, are, they continue to blame people, whereas they have to take some of the blame, you know, as they, they grow up. So it's, it's a sort of a sense of lawlessness, um, uh, violence and indiscipline that's accepted um, across the society. So things have changed in terms of the culture of our societies from even before. And so we are seeing that played out in our societies. My my um, brother, uh, my elder brother, Trevor Oliver, uh, served in the, in the teachers' union and yeah. being a principal himself and a former um, leader of the trade union for teachers, uh, he has been speaking about the importance of children behaving so that they can learn so and teachers can be protected and so forth. I remember going to, to visit someone and the person was pointing out um, that things are already getting bad. And she said, where is Trevor? She's listening to hear his voice. Of course, he's <laughs> retired. <laughs> she said, you know, uh, so he's retired um, and so on. But she's saying, you know, normally she'll hear him speaking up on education. And there are people who are speaking up, but we've got to do more in terms of inter intervening in our homes, uh, training our parents, pointing out that um, people, children who take these parts early, they usually, um, in the end, their lives are miserable, you know? So, and they hurt a lot of people. They, and they are hurt, and hurt people hurt people. people. Yes. yes. So. Yes. I, I heard you talking a lot about training, and I know that is the part we're talking about the world tonight, but um, for training to occur, there has to be, you know, I, I know there has to be books written on the on, on the topics. There has to be document um, teachers trained. They have to be, um, and 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 we are seeing the challenges um, in the home and the churches and everything else. I, I want to ask you: Do you know um, of any Bible colleges um, within the point who have starts who have instituted and and to or their sister? If she, if in any, if there are any, any, um, by 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 teaching by teaching schools, that have colleges that have in, colleges. doing have introduced any courses or um or, or, or anything on on on, on child protection, 
my, my point in asking that, do they see it as urgent? And, and, and we're going to come back to you as CETA president because I know you have a lot of influence on what's happened to the colleges. Um, if not, this thing has either been a pandemic. Ten years ago, yeah, um, Trinidad region has been, <coughs> have been talked about having per million, per million the highest amount of <coughs> people looking in child pornography in Trinidad and Tobago, per million in the world. I, 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 wanted, I wanted to understand what is the problem in the institutions like in teaching training colleges and um, oh, 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 <coughs> what what are they doing and what have what has been happening in all these Bible colleges and happening uh, um, around in that matter? Dr. Oliver? Um, yes, thanks so much. Well, <laughs> one of the schools that has done something, I'm not sure, I don't think it exists right now, but um, we the Caribbean Graduate School of Theology uh, about 15 years ago, 15, 15, 15 to 18 years ago, we collaborated with Compassion International. Um, Compassion International has been providing uh, services uh, for children for over 70 years now. Um, it started in Korea after the Korean War. There were so many orphans <coughs> and so forth. And so, and they've, they've worked with us uh, because one of their vice presidents is from the Caribbean. And um, he has, he has um, uh, partnered with us. And then we introduced a children at risk certificate. And um, uh, Mrs. Dr. Yvette Stupart provided mm -hmm. uh, leadership uh, there to that about, um, 10, 12 years ago, for some period of time. And there we would have graduated a, a couple of cohorts. Uh, um, but but that does not exist at present, you know? So that, 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 that's okay. the reality. Right, it doesn't exist at present. But the point is, something like that should be on the table, you know? And we have done things um, coming out of, uh, we went to churches, we went to regions, we held conferences, we did some training in what we call raising awareness. We did that in Jamaica, um, raising awareness. We had some very good presentations. We engage our people who have been leading in the charge, looking out for the welfare of, of, uh, of children. Um, they have been involved with us. Some of them have been concerned that there's just so much talk about uh, seeking the interests of children and very little action mm -hmm. and, uh, and they were very happy to see that we were we were taking some uh steps to to actually bring about some action you know um so so we've had we've have we've worked with some children advocates over there but we've got to have this thing that is not just as we say the program i'm referring to is no longer in existence mm -hmm. and that is unfortunate yes that's we, we spent a lot of time it was seen as a something that was necessary. And um, and I'm not so sure there would have been if the market was increasing because very often the people who were responding are people who are already involved with children. They're in the Sunday school, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth. And so sometimes people have underestimated the power and the, uh, and the value of the Sunday school. And with the COVID pandemic, that has even created more problems with even, yes. even what was happening before. You know, um, so with with programs like this, we can help people to understand the importance of the, this type of training. Uh, and, 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 and we need to do more in our theological schools. Um, several of our schools, uh, we may not be able to implement totally new courses in existing programs. We may have to get new programs because some of yeah. the existing programs are already overloaded with courses. Right, but what we need to do is to see how could we integrate some of this information into existing courses intentionally. Yes. How could we also have seminars, guest speakers coming in to deal with these matters? Maybe they're part, they're a guest lecturer, you, you, you know, in, in some of the areas to highlight some of the things. You know, what could we do with some of the videos? 
because people only have so much time, you know? Mm -hmm. And so even like what the, the work that is being done currently by global partners, Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago, there are recordings of good things. There could be recordings of other things in the future. How could we use these and say to people, this is a, you need to must view this. And there, there will be discussion on the issues um, because the implications are great. There are persons who, we, our focus has been sometimes the church. So we're talking about the schools and the church, but also children are in every religious organization. Yeah. So you have children who are, who are going to Hindu temples. There are children who are going to mosques, you know? Mm -hmm. So yes. the thing is, we, we got to challenge all of the constituents, wherever there are children, that we have got to uh, raise awareness, put in place policies, understanding why we are putting those policies in place to protect mm -hmm. those who are among our most vulnerable, those yes. whose lives can be turned upside down when things go wrong for them. You know, so yes, we, 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 and then to with the, and we've got to, with the use of the internet and with online learning and other platforms, our reach, the reach of theological schools can be greater, you know, right. so, um, so we've got to be able to do this, do this well and have a change in behavior because the educator, at least I have to, to change, to change by increasing knowledge, the change by uh, bringing about better behavior, behavior meaning whatever you're taught, you're able to do it better. And also the affection part of it where people have become passionate and say that we have got to do this. As pastors are trained, we've got to see that we've got to look out for our children. Pastors should say, I want to embrace this matter in the church I am serving that we have these child protection policies. Here is why. And sometimes we have influence in the general community. If we do a good job in ministry, we are. We also have this overspill into the, the, the general community. So we have got to do more. And then we have got to work together. You know, it's not, a, not necessarily every Bible school doing its own thing. How could we collaborate so that we do these things well and uh many people can benefit little is much when god is in it and yes. if we can work together we can go a far way to changing the status quo but well um anthony um Oliver, i think uh one of the first things you're doing in any 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 crisis this is a pandemic last night we learned that this is a pandemic. It's worse than the COVID numbers are worse than that dying, worse than the COVID crisis we just had. This generation, we have just experienced and an, an the middle of a pandemic. So we know how to fix a pandemic. We saw what happened to the coronavirus, how the countries react. And I am thinking, if we had to fix a pandemic, we have to use pandemic approaches. Yeah. And, and, and it's, not, it's, not just, it's not a business, a cool, casual thing. It's a pandemic. So the yeah. first issue, before we know it was an epidemic, within medical term, no, it's a pandemic. Yeah. And I'm saying, unless you do take a pandemic approach, yeah. which is not a standalone approach, I don't know that the, the, the colleges, the schools will have an impact. We, they, everyone must see that a pandemic. It is a pandemic. So therefore, the, we, we need to have um, courses on the undergraduate level, separate courses. And it has to be a, a, a critical course by itself. I mean, certificate, undergraduate diploma, graduate. And then at postgraduate level, most of all, because there has to be professional training in the area. And, and these must be set up. And it can start with volunteers. It can start and go gradually. My challenge is it is thinking if you don't see it as a pandemic and you see it as a side dish you'll take side dish action and, and that is my problem because right now you jump in a course how can a course like child 
the work we did in um, Charlotte Riskan and um, Charlie Wilbur. How can that be dropped from a Bible college? That children pass us of one deal with a pandemic, with a, with a pandemic and epidemic. It don't seem to compute. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Well, no, I, I, I agree with you. And sometimes, sometimes when um, there are some persons who are making decisions at the higher levels, sometimes they're not um, fully aware of how serious this matter is. That is unfortunate. And yeah. so when institutions may uh, find themselves in financial difficulties, and some of these institutions, they're not government supported, and I am happy about that. You don't want, because if the government supports such, when I say support it, we do want them to be hostile to it. But sometimes if they become the controlling figure, um, they could affect what you teach. You know, I mean, on some of these things, they were, because then they, they can bring in their own agenda. You know, uh, we want to be able to teach the those issues without necessarily what some consider the progressive matters. They're not really progressive because we see them as really not, not being too progressive or the politically correct issues. So, my, my, but the point is sometimes if there are financial problems, people might think let us cut certain things and they cut the wrong things and then the problem becomes worse. Yes. You, you, you understand? So we have got to revisit this matter and said, okay, what are our priorities? Because I will tell you the truth, Compassion International around the world, they have placed great emphasis on this matter of our children at risk, starting with raising awareness, putting policies in place to mitigate the abuse of children in all its forms. Um, and I have been part of they are working with them, um, uh, both in the region and internationally. I mean, not you know, on projects. So not employed by them, but engaged by them, both at the school and also as an individual. And so I am sure that they are very disappointed. And um, we have got to lead here. And the graduate school in Jamaica has been one of the leading, has been viewed as a leading institution to, to assist in this. And the other thing too is that that honorable lady who has led that program, and it was a postgraduate certificate, eh? so it was a very good program, and she was well qualified with a master's degree, with a, a doctorate degree in counseling. So uh, Dr. Supat, uh, and unfortunately too, she passed away. Um, yeah, she passed away. Yeah, you know, so, so, but, so you have people, she was passionate about this and she was really responsible for a home for children as well. So, uh, you know, so she understands the importance of, of uh, trying to protect our children in more ways than one. But we've got to um, do more here uh, to be able to protect our children and to teach it and to get our pastors involved in leading this yes. whole matter. Leading the charge. So, so say young. Yes. I mean, so young Thank you. Um, do you see uh, this, it, it important to, or what would you, what would you see are the advantages of including this in the training colleges, uh, including programs on child protection from nursery to, first of all, in training colleges, from nursery and nursery. also from nursery to tertiary. From the nursery level to the tertiary level, how what, what would you see uh, as advantages of including that kind of thing in training on child protection in all these levels? I think it would be extremely important because as I look at incoming teachers and the younger ones, there is not that awareness on their part with regards to being very mindful of the care of children, because we know that a lot of us are entering the teaching profession for the dollar, or it's just because you cannot find another job. So I think trip imp implementing that at the various levels of ecologies would be important. Mm -hmm. yes. As I listen to this whole proceeding, I'm also mindful of the fact that 
while we want to protect the child by raising awareness among the adults who are responsible for caring for the children because of the way the children are now and because of where they're heading the lack of nurturing at the home i am thinking that while the child protection policy is it is there to help in the various institutions the educational process to raise awareness something has to be done with regard to the children themselves because a lot of these children they are children who are now living on their own Mm -hmm. yeah. And that for me is something that I have been thinking about. How do we raise awareness for the adults, but also bring the children to a level of mindfulness because they are they need to be brought to that level. Because when I look at children now, they are like many adults. Mm -hmm. They are not adults but they are doing a lot of functions and doing a lot of things as if they are adults and they themselves are abusing each other. Yeah. So that's another issue that I think we need to deal with in terms of, yes, we need to educate and bring it into play in the various colleges, but how do we bring this to the level of the children so that they do not abuse each other and themselves because it's happening. That's a that's a that's an issue that I am challenged with as a teacher. Because even if we as teachers are educated and we may pass on some of it, I think especially for the older children, there needs to be some process where the children are brought to awareness. Because one of the other factor is that children in Sunday school that's reducing. Even when we have online Sunday school, we still reach limited amount of children. So the children are, they are at school. We find them at school. So we need to put programs in place to raise awareness at school alongside the necessary academics. Right. Well, I, I wanted to, I could remember, I wanted to remember something. Um, why well, it's important because in Trinidad, we could remember um, the, the, the unions, Tutor union, the union is one for school, for teach for the schools in Trinidad and Tobago. Teachers invited Margaret to conduct training for the principals. And, and, and so therefore they they're the unions, huh? the unions. Now and so they were they were fully aware that child protection needed to be taught. The principals needed preparation, they needed tools to deal with it. And and therefore. Um, at the training colleges, the universities, because even at the crisis now, my, my point is that in the University of the West Indies, distance learning education, distance learning schools, there needs to be, uh, all teachers need to at least have a, 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 a certificate in a, 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 a undergraduate certificate in child protection. And added to that, you were talking about add-ons, they could add it on as a um, course in the natural sciences degree program. You know, we have, we, we did use of English and use civilization. As a foundation course. As a foundation yeah. course. Because we, in other words, there must be pandemic. And that is what I was saying that a pandemic because approach. a pandemic approach, I don't the course as a foundation course. A foundation course means you cannot graduate unless you finish the foundation course. It's not an examinable course, um, but it's a course that, I think there is an examiner. There's, there's an examiner. Mm -hmm. And you must pass it. You must get 50 percent, 40 percent. In other words, it's taught in the night, and you must get it 40 percent to, to, to pass. You must get a pass in it. And I think that kind of approach is one kind of approach we need to do now, because when I could remember when the universities were in crisis, they had all their rules and regulations, and I could remember they had the departments of caution, and they they called and said we wanted to fix it. They called us some outside consultants. We want to fix that now. We went in there, we set up things and fixed it within, they, they move all the rules, fix it and get it fixed. But this issue of, um, in the colleges, I think they need to make a urgency. So it seems to me, the Ministry of Education, we haven't focused on them in this matter yet, because the Ministry of Education has the biggest responsibility to provide and call on education universities and the training colleges to provide, and Bible colleges, they should call on it. What do you think? Well, I feel that the Bible colleges should, even without waiting on the Ministry of Education, I think the, the church should be leading the charge. 
because we have a mandate we have a mandate from the word of god to protect the children that is our mandate and therefore we should lead and in leading we also approach um the government with respect to um putting things in place policies and so on in place to deal with the issue but in the meanwhile while we are waiting on that we can start we should start and we should lead and even at the point that sister young brought with respect to the children i believe that 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 um in addition to having it included in in the training colleges and putting it as a program as a foundation i totally agree that it should be a a, a compulsory course it should be compulsory because it's so important but in addition to that i believe that children we should have training programs for, for children from the from the nursery level early right up to the tertiary level from early childhood right through i i like something that i see that is happening now in terms of our our uh, ministry our children's authority and our ministry of gender and youth affairs they you, you see every now and then on television they have children with um doing little play little games and so on and 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 you know making statements and so on on the issue like there's one that we will yell and tell so you have the children doing the little game and they're saying we will yell and tell so in other words they, they you're training them to tell them that they don't keep silent if anyone interferes mm -hmm. with them they talk they talk they come out so so we can develop all these kinds of um um you know the games and different ways of training children but bringing it in the curriculum it should be a part of the curriculum right through if this thing is going to be uh if it's going to be seen as important if it is going to be given the level of significance pandemic and importance treatment. as you call it as you you know you label it a pandemic, a shadow pandemic. It, yes and i've seen you know it has been referred to as a shadow pandemic the abuse if we it is going to be given the level of importance we have to infiltrate it, feed it in throughout the entire system throughout the entire education system starting from ecc to primary to secondary at the level of the students at the level of the teachers then in addition to that now we have to we have to get into the homes and have training for parents workshops for parents in our communities because many parents do not recognize the the effect or the impact of how they deal with their children they, they don't realize a lot of parents don't realize that they do a lot of them don't realize the impact of how they discipline their children what they say to them the names that they call them sometimes their parent is angry and they call the children all kinds of different things they curse the children they you know they, they discipline them in ways that, that 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 are really actually not you know it could yeah. amount in some cases it could amount to an offense right in the way that they, they discipline in terms of the physical corporal punishment and things like that but a lot of times parents are not really aware of yeah. how it is affecting their children but but that takes me to the parent teachers associations all your schools in st vincent have parent teachers associations do, do you have parent do you teachers have associations? we do PTAs. we do have pta as we call them here but they function at different levels i think that the cream of the crop schools their pta's yes. are stronger and more involved in the progress yeah. progression of their schools yes but, yeah but no, that is another very important thing we can introduce ptas because ptas means you're bringing the parents nearer to the situation and training the situation um, um so that is a very important thing if we can train the ptas the parent teachers associations and encourage them to in turn train help in this situ situation um dr oliver what can sita do in this situation well sita can do because we are we, we have a we're in touch with um, member institutions throughout the Caribbean, um, Cuba, uh, Haiti, uh, Spanish, French, uh, English, as the case might be. We can focus, and I believe we have done that to some extent in the past, but we've got to bring it back on the table because things have only gotten worse. Um, and especially during the pandemic, where students were not able to go out to school and so forth, there might have been a lot of abuse in the homes and you, you know yeah. and that's not going to come into light and so forth so we've got to bring this back on the table put it on the front burner and say to our constituents that folks we have got to get this done and do it right 
and we we can collaborate. It's yeah. not as though every school has to have its own instructor. That's Why right. can't yeah. we do some things jointly? You know, mm -hmm. um, so we are we, we can deal with the we can have the uh, the, uh, the the critical mass. You know, uh, yeah. maybe uh, we could agree on, and put something maybe on a particular evening or as the case might be at a certain time and say to students, we've got to participate in this. You've got to do a reflection paper on this, you, you, you know. Uh, so we, we, we know that they are engaging in the material and so forth. So this is why, this is how we can participate. And then there must be some of the institutions that are actually doing some of these programs full full fledged. Yeah. At the graduate school, we need to try to see how we can get that program back. Uh, but I'll tell you another issue, though, that sometimes when people do programs, um, in some cases, some person might prefer that at the end of a certificate, there is some sort of a recognition and compensation. So yeah. sometimes people do courses that they could perhaps get an increase in salary. You, 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 you understand what I mean? So sometimes the people who are doing these classes, um, you know, which is everything is like voluntary. I hear Dr. Ken was just talking about volunteerism, and we need to try to see how we can stoke those fires. But sometimes persons also need to, we need to recognize that there are avenues for persons to be able to go out and they can do some of the training and they could be compensated too. And that will help, you know, not everybody because we need to have uh, an army of volunteers. But for some of the persons, they need to be compensated and, and, and so forth because we are training people at different levels. Yes. You, you know, because for some of the training, and not everybody doing a full fledged certificate. What we want to do is raise awareness at every level, help change behavior at every level. That's you know, right. but there are persons who will be, um, um, will require more training so they can, and there will be people who will be training the trainers and Probably. so on and so forth. You, you, you know, so it is that type of thing. And so, We've, we have got to do more and um, we've got to con continue to, to work with partners like Compassion International and other stakeholders, um, break the silence here in, 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 at the University of the West Indies, uh, St. Augustine, and, and I, I believe also in, in, in Mona and, and perhaps in Cape Barbados and see how we can work. Because all of us, we there are children that we know, we have children to protect, and as Dr. Dan Brewster, in his book, Future Impact, he, um, he has said that all children are at risk. Yes. All. It's a he says some are at risk because of poverty and some are at risk because of prosperity. That's and right. with the internet, uh, the children who have affluence, they have the tablet and they have, you know, and with the pandemic, all it, it makes sometimes children there's an the advantage but right in their homes right in our bedrooms our children could be negatively impacted by predators who are yep. waiting online they're they're doing their work and something comes up you know not yeah. that they intended it at all they, they click on it and they're, they're, they're taken somewhere else so it's a, a lot about also putting in uh, certain uh, mechanisms to put so that they can't go on certain sites. It's all of that. And as Dr. Margaret Burgess, you, 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 you said in one of your presentations, I'm not sure if it was on San Fernando, the Open Bible, but I've, I've heard you, you said more than uh, the parent, the two children, two young people are, uh, are texting each other and, um, and the yes. mom, a parent comes in and they have POS. In Trinidad, you might think it's Port of Spain, abbreviation of what it and, and the person was basically saying parent over shoulder. That's right. <laughs> the parents might just see this, you know, text message and not knowing. So we need to raise the awareness of, of parents as well. I said, what could they do? Because, you know, um, because sometimes it's a different age. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes yeah. you think they're quiet in their room. And you say, they're so nice, be quiet, but you don't know what is going on. If you don't monitor it, how do you kind of uh, uh, impose uh, reasonable things? Maybe you can say at a certain time, I'll take the phone because they could be getting text messages or 10, 30, you think they're sleeping, but they're not, and so on and so forth. So, and we yes. need a whole team to, to That's help. That's right. Yes. Yeah. We want to welcome Reverend Calvin Brown from Jamaica is on board. Um, 
Good Reverend Brown. Um, good night. Good night <laughs> to So Doctor. nice to have you on tonight. How are it's you? Good. It's good to be here. It's good to join you. And it's good to see and hear my esteemed professor, <laughs> Dr. Reverend Anthony <laughs> Oliver. Reverend Brown, good to see you, sir. Greetings. God bless you. God bless you. And, and to see Reverend Cetronella Young. Um, is is that the Reverend from St. Vincent? <laughs> it is indeed, it's Reverend uh, Young. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. My 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 apologies, my apologies for for joining late. If you may notice, I'm I'm actually in my car. I noticed that. <laughs> yes, um, I haven't reached home yet, and I tell you this, I'm actually heading to church. I have to stop at church before I get home. Anyway, okay. so I, <laughs> I yeah, wonder how just, you make it. <laughs> it's just one of those days. Yes, yes, yes. Um. Calvin, we want to talk about this pandemic of child maltreatment pandemic, sexual yes. pandemic. We have been having this special series for the week. And I am not seeing anything coming out of the colleges. Um, Dr. Oliver has no courses, no training. We have over thousands of pastors that need to be trained. They need to get at least a minimum of diploma right now. A minimum of undergraduate diploma. And then we have postgraduate training. I, I don't think courses could help anything. You don't do courses in a pandemic. You do that, that patchwork, but you need to do real things to teach because a pandemic is going to take a long time. What uh, you are a principal of a, of a school, you have been to college. What can we do? What should be done in this pandemic of child man treatment? Where the, 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 the results have been worse than COVID 19. More people are being abused than how uh, and killed uh, than what happened in COVID 19. How are we addressing that? And the churches are just infiltrated. What should be done both in the churches and both in the colleges, in CARICOM? Yeah, great. Um, it, this is really a very timely and relevant, and I dare say a poignant um, consideration at this point in time. When I joined, uh, Dr. Oliver was talking um, about the, the fact that all children are at risk and he made the point that they are at risk either by poverty or prosperity and i and i was thinking that perhaps the lines are now blurred dr oliver because for example i, I am i i can relate to a situation where a lot of children who can't afford tablets would have benefited from uh efforts made during the pandemic by various governments uh, in jamaica for example i would have as a principal i would have um, received uh over 200 tablets and the children that were targeted are not affluent children they are children of poverty who would have been at a disadvantage so that they could be engaged in online school and so in a way the the pandemic has perhaps brought a greater um equity in terms of access the only disadvantage is that the children of affluence will perhaps have um, unlimited internet access and so on but the fact is that all children are being exposed via the internet and even those who do not have the the guidelines and the parameters where there are controls and there is oversight and all of that and children who come from um you know less affluent homes sometimes end up being unsupervised and left mm -hmm. entirely on their own and are therefore far more vulnerable and at risk of predators who will will pursue them via the internet so the, you, you're quite right uh one of the pandemics that we need to focus on perhaps especially now that the actual public health pandemic is is on the back end is the pandemic of child abuse and um and 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 the the extent to which many children have been victims of abuse during this pandemic yeah uh, but to come to your question to come to your question um the there is a great need and you have highlighted it i'm sure dr oliver would have spoken already i know that for example Caribbean Graduate School of Theology in Jamaica 
um, has a course. Now, I know that the course is not about child protection per se, but because of its emphasis uh, in association with Compassion International, um, not quite remembering the name of the course now, but because of its emphasis on, on, on children's ministry and, and compassionate, uh, you know, outreach to children, um, I believe that there is a heightening of the awareness. There is a laying of a foundation that is already taking place in academia, particularly in the theological education sector. But I believe that, and I'm in agreement with you because what I'm hearing you to be saying is that there is a need for education, yeah, um, yeah. especially at the tertiary level. Yeah. Um, to be paying attention to the research, to be paying attention to the training of practitioners, yes. and to be paying attention to the development of curricula at both the at least starting at the secondary level in a fulsome way. The reason I say that is because uh, I've spent a lot of years in primary education as well as sometime in secondary education. And unfortunately, in, in Jamaica, I'm not sure what happens in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Trinidad and other places in the Caribbean, but uh, um, the, the, the guidance and counseling program and the personal development program um, in the primary school focuses a lot more on child protection, teaching children about their rights, teaching children about their responsibilities, teaching children about safety in a general way. And then when it gets to the secondary level, it tends to move away from those things and focuses more on career choices. Yes, and um, self-esteem issues and those kinds of things. And, and so even though some amount of augmenting and, and, and development is needed at the primary level, a much greater need um, for for that kind of focus needs to take place in the secondary level. And I think, um, you know, uh, I don't know if you have anybody in teacher education, for example, in this forum, but that's perhaps one of the avenues, Dr. Burgess, and, and I know you have connections um, in that fraternity that we perhaps need to target because um, teacher education, I believe, should involve on two levels. One, practitioners, because under the law, and I'm sure this is so in the Caribbean, teachers are regarded as um, what, what's it, what's the, 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 the uh, people with a duty of care. That's a terminology. Yeah. You have yeah. a duty of care yeah. um, to, to, to children, whereas all adults in the society have a responsibility and that responsibility tends to lead to lean more towards reporting and inter intervening intervention um teachers have a duty of care and and therefore and i believe teachers have the most primary duty of care because children uh for the vast majority of their developmental years let's say from primary school while some children you know, because of poverty and other other causes may not get the best in the early childhood education. Most of our countries have laws that make education compulsory and yeah. children who are not going to primary school and secondary school, actually their, their rights are protected under the laws of most of the Caribbean countries and parents can get into trouble for, for not um, exposing, uh, allowing their children to be in school. And therefore between age age of six and say 17 children spend far more hours per week with their teachers than mm -hmm. with parents or any other yes. caregivers mm -hmm. and so i believe that should be integrated and become part of teacher education so that our teachers are are, are schooled in in the the we talk about fiduciary responsibility, Dr. Uh, Margaret, but we talk about it. I don't think we teach our practitioners who have a duty to carry on yes. fiduciary responsibility, what that means and the gravity of it. So that's one yes. place where I believe we should be targeted. targeted. 
there's all, there's another reason, and the reason is that teachers more than anyone else have the hmm. opportunity to mold children and to get children to understand and appreciate that they are protected under the law, what their rights are, um, what they should be alert to. And so I believe a lot more targeting needs to be done um, in the teacher education fraternity. Yeah, yeah definitely, right. definitely. It goes without saying, and, and I think, uh, Dr. Oliver, um, whilst we're not patting ourselves on the shoulder, the church has led the way so far in so as far as uh, a focus on child protection and care being integrated in academia. Yes, and I believe with that level of responsibility and the credibility and the respectability that the church has uh maybe we might need to, to lead the way there's the, we go back into history and we see also where the church did play a part in the inception of teacher education um you know back in the day so i think there's a there's a place for a um a coalition of those forces theological education and teacher education to lead the way and and i think Thanks. and i think um uh, you, you made mention about the universities. Definitely, they need to come on board as well um, in so far as research work is concerned. That will help to inform curriculum. I, I think that's the approach that, 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 that um, we, we should be advocating. Yeah, yes. and I, I, I recognize tonight, I was looking at first time I met um, Reverend King, and she has a master, Reverend Young. Reverend Young. Sorry, sorry, my deepest apologies. Reverend Young, and she has a master's in instructional design and how she do the special ed and all this other sort of thing. And I was, you know, when I travel, I try to look at people. We have people trained in um, education, curriculum development, learning strategies at postgraduate levels, right through the region. So we have the competencies to develop these programs. And, all, and I'm sure they will be able to dilute it at a, at, at, at a at the voluntary stages to begin because it's a pandemic. When you're in a pandemic, you 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 ask you to, you, you know what the president of America does. He he said he said, Lois, look, man, it's a pandemic. Let's give me some time. You we was in a crisis. They say they look and take brother bushes. We are crisis. Come and come and give us. We want this to set up. Take us out of this. And I volunteered and teach train free, free for university, from ten years, free for free. Yeah, yes, free. Yes, yes. But then so you are lots of people, professionals out there. Who will give up their time in a I pandemic? Who will be willing to give it time to graduate school and college because we have a backlog of all these pastors need to train all, 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 all. Have to train and get certificates and and professional development start with get get it going in the Caribbean so we could save the children. The children is the life of the nation, and then then because this is all those also you know parents you know and it has impact on how women are treated. This whole thing with women being beaten and that kind of thing, and it's affecting both males and females. And not only boys are being, women are predators, men are being predators, females are being predators. So we have to do a pandemic approach. And I think that in our institutions, we should call a state of emergency right now. Mm -hmm. A state of emergency, uh, Oliver, call a, call a conference, like what they're doing in, um, in Europe, and say, hey, this is a pandemic. How can we help fix this? Because the pastors have no tools, no nothing to fix it. I know Margaret's book is in is um in one of the news, they use it as text. And and, and I think in CX it's a text, but we have to do something. Pastors need help, churches need help, and most of all, our children need help. Dr. Oliver and Dr. Reverend Young, what do you what say you? How uh, am I off? in asking that we have a state of emergency to set up curriculum to call a standards to fix this situation from the education community the education committee with due respect and i have i love it i've been a, on the graduate school for medicine mm -hmm. section it's my opinion that the education committee is silent for better for what they are silent they're not saying anything and they're not doing anything. reverend young what do they say i do agree with you that something needs to be done because I, I feel that our children are just 
being attacked, especially by those unseen predators who sometimes they have so much influence over our children and sometimes the adults just don't know what to do. So being educated raises awareness and takes away, I believe, some level of the helplessness that some persons may be feeling yes. at times. So I believe that pushing an education drive and raising awareness should bring some level of balance to this very frightening situation because our children are in need of being protected. That's right. That's right. And and and, and Oliver, we could do it for free, you know. We could call the pastors, help them know that pandemic, we give service. We can help mobilize competent people to give service. We do it. Uh, we do the course. Um, uh, um, um, graduate school and set up the course. We do it over the air. We get coordination. We get this, and we do it. You won't have to. Pay, and I think we have to take pandemic, and and talk to the governments too. They will sponsor and have people train because they they don't know what to do i was listening to people say they, they don't know what to do and i am saying we cannot say of course they can know we want to have a pandemic call all the colleges i'm sitting up board call the call the association we did some work with you call the associate look man we have to fix this thing what can we do we can run with us educate well who can pull the experts we have experts with the content of the course we have curriculum people can do it we don't have to wait and ask nobody yeah. for permission and you, you run it. I, I, I'm saying I, I would like to see emergency pandemic action. action. Yes. 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 So, yes, I think um, we, we, we agree that passion is, is measured in terms of the, 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 the crises that we are confronted with. We have our primary focus has been on children and the, the, the abuse. But as Dr. Ken just has indicated, um, many of the problems are also with the abuse of our vulnerable women. And we have seen over and over. So there's a, and there's a pandemic of crime. Yeah. And there is this interrelationship. So we are going to do take steps to, to communicate and to pass on this urgency because it's part of what we have been doing for some time and we want to kind of pick it up again and um, yeah. to communicate this to our, our stakeholders in the theological fraternity and to get our pastors on board uh, because pastors need to be able to preach some messages on some of these issues as well because here is where um, Jesus says that I am come that they may have life. Yes. And some of these situations are situations that are bringing about death, literally physical death. There are situations that are, are bringing about death to potential, um, the kind of a value that the nations would like to see our children add to the nations and to our region. Sometimes when people are hurt, their lives are in all sorts of turmoil and they're destroyed psychologically and they are not able to perform because of the level of trauma that they are experiencing. And we have got to come to terms with this. One of the courses uh, we've got to look at and incorporate to would be the whole issue of mediation. How do we engage in mediation? How do we have practical solutions? How do we challenge our police officers to respond when there's a call, you know? And, and how do we, these are things that we must do. And the church needs to lead the way. Well, well, yeah. Reverend Oliver, so many pastors have been over the Caribbean, have been charged and in jail. In all the, all the, from all the church organizations, Protestant organizations, evangelical organizations in the Caribbean. Um, 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 on Sunday, you all were talking, and Adrian was talking about um, the whole issue is a human being. Because a part of the course is that you have to, you have to, we don't know yet how to deal with these victims, you know, because we're short of money. We're talking, Dr. Burgess is talking about advocacy centers. Then we have to talk about the perpetrators. So the, the perpetrators, sorry. And then we have to talk in our small societies. We are big like America. And therefore, the course, the training and the courses are so urgent that, and, and, and there's a backlog that I am saying that it, it, it is bigger. It is bigger than um, anything that is present now. And, and, and I'm saying 
oh, um, one thing was came out of that session Sunday that the, the, the fact, remember, we have been covering up this thing for years. And Adrian was saying, the, 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 the society, the civil society is using confidence in the church's organizations. And therefore, we got to train our pastors. And all of that makes took, it urgent. Yeah, all that makes the urgency. And somehow they have been training wrong because you haven't been screening them in colleges. But the key issue is training, get our people on board, and we can create an emergency program for the next five years. I'm recommending an emergency program for the next five years. You call up a team, we get the curriculum written in, in, in so they can, that, that's what they're doing, you know, we call a team, I get a team, move all the barriers, set up the curriculum, put what you have to do, get the teacher to bomb, pow, in, implement it. By September, we have a certificate course, then a diploma course. Then, and then after you do that for the undergraduate, then you get a next thing by thing, you get by February, by, by January, you have a program, diploma program, and and make it make it succinct for the postgraduate diploma for the for the graduates. I am saying the the, the, the Bible colleges must act like efficiently, and everybody don't have to run the same course for their own their own organizations. As you said, collaboration. Well, and also since we have the virtual platform, yes, that makes it easier, so that. I, I mean, num a large number of people in different colleges and so on could be running. You know, you have one 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 main co one main college running the course right, on the virtual platform, so that it could be other people could be involved in it. Other people could join in the graduate school or whoever, right? But the virtual platform makes it easier for collaboration and for you know making it widespread in terms of um, the access as accessibility, right? So that, um, yes, I agree with what Reverend Burgess talks, uh, state of emergency, you know, having a having, pandemic having approach, approach, yeah, a, a approach of a, a state of emergency. It is urgent. It is not something that, you know, that we can but we just allow to run and, and, and take time. It is absolutely urgent. People are dying. Lives are being lost. Children, families are being destroyed. And... I still say that the church has the answer. And they can't cope. Churches can't yeah, cope. But the answer is there. Yes, the answer, the answer is, is there. there. But we have to be prepared to take action. Yes. Yes. And the action that has to be taken tonight, we are focusing on the education aspect. aspect. Taking action on the issue of education. Educating at all levels. So I agree with, with, with what your, your, um, your pronouncements and your proposals, Dr. Oliver. And also, Sister, uh, Reverend Young and Reverend Calvin, Reverend Cal Reverend Calvin Brown. He's also a concert trainer. He's a EP, and I'm sure he will give some of his time because remember, we can package the lectures to do that, and we can have practical. Well, practical again, practical free. We got practical right next to your left, right, and center. So, so I am saying, um, uh, Reverend Brown, Calvin, I was talking about instituting a pandemic courses. But in the next six months, we must have a certificate course, at least undergrad for all passes. We will help. We will help. We will help. We will help. We will help collect them to get a course, and on an undergrad diploma. Then at diploma level, and then the graduate school have to do something at the graduate school to train our people. The courses because we need trainers in every country. We need trainers in every country. We need people. Training of trainers. Training of trainers in every country. We need people to deal with this issue. Passers don't know what to do. People afraid. Um, and I'm sure you will get the lawyers to put our courses to you, and they, we could ask them to do that free first, the volunteer service. We have the expertise. Um, what, what is this design? Is this, this the green master's in instructional design? She can do something for the people who are there. And people will give, ask them for a five year waiver. We'll get free. We will look at global partners, Kyber Mission. We'll look for, for sponsors to help in different things. What I'm saying, we have to have the will. And where there's a will, there's a way. And we can't operate, oh, you're going formality there. And there are epidemic crises where our next generation have been destroyed, our nations have been destroyed. I could remember they declared Jamaica West Morins. They declared that place as, I mean, as a, as, 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 as a child. West Morland, not West Morins. West Morland. When it was declared as a, as a, a, a child abuse, what pandemic, you know the term they use. Don't talk about, and, and we cannot afford that to continue anymore. We have to do, we have to save our children and we have to contribute and we have to collaborate. 
Calvin. Yeah. Can we put it together? Can the graduate school put it together? Can we put it together in a, in a, in a, in, in our institution? Do they have the will and the way? We should have been put producing the, uh, uh, with eight years now. We should have had an undergraduate uh, undergraduate course at, at CWC, Caribbean Wesleyan College. We should at least have a certificate program. We have all the competencies and skills and teachers to do it. What is happening? We just sitting down there. Right. So I, I I've been sitting here and and asking myself the question: Where where is the leadership to come from? Because there clearly is there is no lack of understanding awareness of the mm -hmm. the nature of the problem the nature of the crisis and from the discussion so far it is very clear that we are not puzzled about um the strategy that should be taken but where exactly is the leadership to come from um I, I don't Oliver, know. Where is school? I, I I don't know, um, Doctor Oliver. If if this is something which, for example, we could we could agitate, we could um, get say a body like Sita. It, would that be something within their remit um, to kind of mobilize mobilize a conference, a conference in the Caribbean mm -hmm. of of theological educators and even. Um, uh, educators who, who, yeah. who are because as i said teacher education while it is not it is separate and distinct from theological education it is certainly a companion field in terms of our our our, our service to, to children to uh, provision of child services yes and um even though there are two different fields i am of the view that there's an opportunity um for us to to coalesce around the well-being the welfare of the children of our community yeah yes sir. um Reverend calvin i um i believe that through CETA, we just finished our consultation but there are means for us to, to communicate with member schools and the last consultation that was held in april uh, of this year we've had the best attendance um, at a consultation because it was done on a virtual platform. And so this is a platform that we can use to reach um, our constituents across the region. And uh, there is this sense of urgency. And we will, uh, we do have, uh, even with um, organizations like the, um, the, the Trinidad and Tobago Council of Evangelicals and so yeah. forth. And yeah. then working with the Jamaica Council, and then we are people and stakeholders in St. Vincent. So we can work both in terms of the institutions, uh, CETA schools, but also try to work with the these uh, umbrella organizations, yes. you know, um, and to try to raise, so to say the persons, we have got to address this matter. And we do have credibility. We um both in terms of places like jamaica where we had a national conference and where we have worked and i've had a very good uh, interaction with the executive of the trinidad and tobago council of evangelicals and we know several people in places like saint vincent and the other nations the nazarenes in barbados and the wesleyans in barbados and so forth so it is something that is doable and so we we, we commit to making sure that this matter is addressed um, with alacrity and that we will, we by God's grace, we will have this matter um, addressed. So um, this is part of the, the commitment. Hallelujah. This is part of the commitment to do what we, we, we can, um, you know, so, and let us, let us get the message back to our churches. Let us ask, and here's where mm -hmm. um, it has been pointed out that we thank God for all of our, uh, our giftings, our spiritual gifts, but the nature of some of the things we are dealing with is almost as though we need, as we always have talked about the, the power of the spirit in a new way, there's a, a greater dependence why we are gifted and we are qualified. The issues uh, will not just work with our giftings. 
That's right. You know, for, for effectiveness, we really need God to strengthen us, to give us divine ideas, and we need to respond to a challenge like this. So I want to commend um, what is being done in terms of the passion of the team at Global Partners Caribbean um, Trinidad. Uh, you know, um, we want to thank you, and we will do all we can in terms of the stakeholders at the Caribbean Wesleyan College, graduate school, the different institutions, because we have children and we, children are under our care, and we do have a fiduciary responsibility. And we want to be told at the end of the day, well done, thou good and faithful servant yes. from the ultimate master. In the meantime, we have responsibility to our nation. Yes. Because, you know, we want our children to, to be able to add the type of value that will make parents happy. And sometimes when they are hurt and injured, and when they're dealing with some of these things that they don't need to be dealing with, it is a major hindrance to them performing uh, optimally. And um, so for several reasons from different perspectives, we have got to, we have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. And we have got to use our giftings to advance the cause of Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. Anthony, um, Margaret has just completed a, a policy and implemented one of the largest churches in Trinidad and Tobago, over 4,000 members. They have implemented, they have installed it, and they have started. And they, they have a hospital, a lot of stuff, and, and schools, primary. So, so we have we have people who can talk about it, teach on how it was implemented, teach about the time, experience, practical experience. So, so we have people who can tell you about it in the Caribbean, um, um, um and, and and that's a big church, that's a big organization. So, they tell you the challenges they have, what it took. So it is there. Um, our churches have policies. Everybody, we we got, but we, we, we but that is not good enough. We had to get the whole everybody on board. I, I I I am so concerned about this crime issue. I am so concerned about our evangelism. Margaret says, Doctor Boje says something. When the children, when a child is abused by his father, and and this week is for, uh, it's father week, and um when he's praying, when he comes to the church and say, Our Father. They can't, they can't compute. They can't compute because they're seeing abuse. They're seeing everything through the eyes of abuse. And, and, and we need to, we can't just stand there and see bone, um, room burn. Room burn. And I, I think we have too much competencies. We have too much talents. We have too much people with all levels of competencies to teach. Certainly to train and lecture and teach at the undergraduate level. What We have to have that cork. And we can we have people, and it do has to be this the, all this all this thing where people are looking for power. It has to be volunteer, and we'll get the backlog changed. Barely pass as you're coming free. And I'm saying we're well, not free. They must, they must be free. They must pay a small pittance, whatever it is, a registration amount. But the issue is, it has to be done within the next three months, starting action within the next six months. By the time set, we should see all these educates beginning to roll out. Amen. So we want to... <laughs> Brother Brown, you want to say yeah. something? Yes. So um, you know, I, I'm sitting here listening, thinking, um, perhaps even dreaming. <laughs> um, I, and this, this, there's a vision. There's a vision that I can't help but, but um, postulate, um, Dr. Oliver. The, the Caribbean is perhaps one of the world, at least the Western world's Hallelujah. last bastion of biblical morality. Hallelujah. And um, the, the, we, we are uniquely positioned. We are yes, uniquely yes. positioned. Um, you, you know, you made a point. We have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. And when I speak of the kingdom here, I'm speaking of kingdom in a very global sense. As we look at our world and the trends that are taking place in our world and, and what's happening because there is an extent to which 
part of the problem is the eroding values and the blurring of moral values which is happening on the world stage and especially in countries that are of greater affluence and greater prominence in terms of how they influence global forces geopolitical uh, operations but one of the things that that is is one of the areas in which um they are losing out is the preservation of healthy wholesome social morality yes and the the caribbean still has and, and is regarded some people some people speak of us all almost as though we are backward yes although we are unenlightened but whatever language is used there is a, an important yeah. thing that is highlighted which is that our sense of morality and social responsibility is not subject to the kind of liberation thinking that is 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 dominating the rest of the world first world um the, the north the, the northern hemisphere so to speak yeah and and if we were to lead the way in a movement like this yeah, where here. church church brings academia together and brings the major entities and stakeholders in society with responsibility for our children to call us around something like this identifying policies um, best practices standards and eventually um improving on the laws that exist in our countries what a leadership what a leadership we we would have demonstrated in in our world um from a place like the caribbean yes yeah. and, and i just have this vision this sense that i believe that that sita will succeed um the the evangelical community in the caribbean is perhaps stronger and more representative of church in a global sense in our region perhaps more than anywhere else in the world yes and and also there is not a great divide and a great dissonance between those who identify with let's say the council of churches and those who identify with the evangelical umbrella I think there is great respect and mutual cooperation between these entities. Yes. And so I believe we are poised and I believe we 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 are part of a, a, a community, a, 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 a region where the forces that galvanize our society are in favor of this of this kind of mobilization. Yes. And so I just I just embrace embrace that kind of vision that the Caribbean could lead the way. That's right. Yeah, in establishing a society that really is serious about protecting our children, guided by the standards of biblical morality. Amen. So let's run with the vision, Doctor King. Yes, uh, Sister Reverend Young. Just as we wrap up, could you share us some closing comments and comments on the vision? And commend on the vision that Reverend Reverend Tom Brown and Dr. Oliver have been sharing. I want to say thanks to you for giving me the opportunity to think more on this topic because you, Dr. Burgess, Dr. Margaret Burgess, started me thinking on this many years ago when you came to St. Vincent. And this invitation has given me the opportunity to think in relation to my own encounters with students at my school. Yes. As I wrapped up the school year in different ways, and I say wrapped up because it's already happening, I was able to use your video from last night to post it in my Girl Guides Teach um, Parent Chat because some of the things that you said, to, said last night, I wanted to say to them. But you provided that quick avenue for me to access that information, and I posted mm -hmm. it there with the intention of following up because our parents need to be aware of 
the challenges that their children are facing from the faceless enemy that is so present in their home via the mm -hmm. internet when their children are browsing the internet at night. So I want to say thank you for that. I also join with everyone who would have expressed the issue of a vision of challenging this situation that we are faced with to embrace and educate where we can. And I do believe we are in a situation where we can embrace that and we can educate. So whatever I can do to participate in this process, I will be willing and I will continue to keep the process in prayer because prayer will move mountains. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to participate. And as I said, let's progress in prayer on this very vital issue for the children of our nation. Amen. You. Amen. No Thank problem. you so much, uh, Reverend Young. And Dr. Oliver, Oliver anything else as we last wrap up in closing? Last word. Bro. Last word. <laughs> last word. Well, I have been um, for a couple of decades at least been involved in the whole history of children at risk. And um, I've been fired up uh, to kind of uh, get, you know, get even more involved and to um to, to challenge our people to get involved and um this week's an appointment which was not really sought <laughs> in terms of providing leadership at the caribbean evangelical theological association and um just today we and tomorrow we also have a meeting at the international level and um for several of our colleagues that's an issue there so we'll try to see how we can bring that to the international stage Amen. Uh, Amen. As, as well and i want us to remember that even some as we speak uh, one of our affiliate schools in the baltic the baltic states there with russia and because of the war a lot of our children are being violated many of them um they have had to flee at, uh, just a few months ago some of them lived pretty well and now they are refugees in neighboring countries some mm -hmm. of the our girls the girls have been raped mm -hmm. and who will hold the the powerful accountable i suppose if you have nuclear weapons nobody could hold you accountable mm -hmm. um that se seems to be the message might uh make some people it seems right but we've mm -hmm. got to act um our strengths it is not by alone by human might or power mm -hmm. Uh, we sense our own vulnerability, our own weaknesses, but we depend upon God, who has said it is not by human might, nor by human power, but by my spirit. Yes. So just to, in terms of the vision and in terms of the emphasis that uh, Reverend Young has talked about on prayer, and here's where we ought to get up our, our churches involved. Mm -hmm. because we work, we work uh, with and through uh, with our churches and with prayer, God will take a little and do mighty things. So I, I do covet your own prayer too, as yeah. I was praying for you, coming to praying for you. And let's pray that God will open doors. There's a God who is amazing in what he can do. And we want to see him out as we, we seek to advance his kingdom and to be the salt and light that he said we are and we do all of this so that men may see our good works and glorify him in heaven yes so this is our amen, aim. amen. thank you so much uh dr oliver and i am really excited and i'm really happy to hear all that that that, that has been shared here tonight i'm happy that that you know we uh getting the vision out there and we are all catching the vision and I pray that we will run with that vision. I'm excited when I heard Reverend Young say that she shared it with her group mm -hmm. and this is what we need to do. These All of these sessions are recorded on YouTube. You can share it because you see we have to get the message around. So as you share with your congregations and, your, and even your friends and your family and staff and so on, the message will get out there, the urgency. We want everyone to recognize the urgency. And so let's share, let's continue to run with the vision. 
And I know that God orders all steps. And it is extremely significant, Dr. Oliver, that the Lord has you where you are at this point in Hallelujah. time. Hallelujah. That's not by chance. And I'm meeting tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and, and you have a meeting tomorrow. Hallelujah. God has you in that place. Oh, glory. You, you know, the Lord has brought you there like a Joseph and like, you know, all those that the Lord has, like a Daniel and a Joseph, he has you right there. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. I, we will pray for you and we will continue to support you in the in, in this, you know, the, this task that the Lord has placed on your shoulder. And we know that the Lord is going to give you all, all the wisdom, all the strength, all the everything to get this running. So I want to thank all of you. Thank you so much, Reverend Brown and the Reverend Young. I want to thank everyone for all of your participation tonight. And I trust that God is going to continue to bless you. And at this time, as we close, we want to ask Reverend Brown to pray for us pray as for we and pray for Oliver tomorrow. and pray for Dr. Oliver tomorrow as he has this important meeting and even for every one of us as we go forward. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our gracious God and our Father, we thank you that yes. you are the God of our nations. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord, that you are at work in our nation. Praise God. And even this evening, we recognize that in this forum, in this discussion, not only among those of us who are sharing and leading in the conversation, but the many who are listening and uh, viewing online, and and the many who will who will who will view even later, that you have already positioned yes. those yes. who yes. you are calling yes. for such a time as this. Yes to give leadership in our nations, yes. leadership that will turn the hearts of our people back to God, but more so leadership that will turn the hearts of our children back to God. Our children are disillusioned. Our children are in fear, in anguish. Uh, there is a disconnect and uh, many of them have be, been sold the lies that somehow through the gadgets and through the the, the, the the items of entertainment that today's society provides for them, that they can find the avenues and the refuge that they need. When in fact, they find themselves plunged into even greater hurt and harm oh god you have called us as a church yes. and as a people of god for such a time as this to yes. rescue this generation lord, continue to declare that the nation belongs to you that that the caribbean belongs to you lord god that our children belong to you god yes and so, Father, we pray that you would stir our hearts, Lord Jesus, that you would, would, would awaken us and cause us to, to rise, even after this evening's uh, discussion, to rise beyond debate, discussion, conversation, and to move into action. Because yes, that's what yes, you want yes. us to do, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your servant, Dr. Anthony Oliver, whom you have yes. positioned over the years, oh God, through his service and uh, servant leadership in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in the Caribbean. God, we thank you that you have called him and positioned him for this season. We recognize the season that we are in, God. You are moving us as a church to rise up, Lord God. I continue to declare that we can change our nations. We can change. Yes, yes. We can yes. change St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We can change yes. and Tobago and Barbados and, and Antigua and all of the islands of the Caribbean. One child at a time. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our commitment, Lord. Yes, Father, Lord. we yes. pray that the resources that are needed, the, the all the wherewithal that is needed, God. Even as uh Dr. Oliver will be going to this meeting tomorrow where you will lead him to, to raise the concerns, yes. raise the issues and, and broach the idea of uh, the Caribbean Christian community leading the way to mobilize the institutions of society that have this fiduciary responsibility to ensure yes. that training, uh, curriculum, uh, policies, laws, all that co contribute to the ordering of a safe and, and wholesome society are impacted in such a way that the best interest of our children is uppermost in the undertakings of those who provide service to the children of our community. Lord, we pray that you would give him the wisdom, give him the anointing, the enabling, that you would even go before him, go ahead of him and prepare yes. the minds, the, the very atmosphere of that yes, yes. open, to be receptive, to be responsive, that there will be a readiness, that there will be a resonance in the hearts of those who will hear the, the, the call that will result in a, a movement a movement, a current, a flow in that direction that will honor God at yes. such a time as this. Lord, we declare that this is your season. Hallelujah. A season when you are positioning the Caribbean leaders to lead the way even in our world. Yes, Lord. To restore and to preserve yes. biblical morality for the next generation. God, we thank you. We thank you. We declare that the protection and the preservation of our children will become such a priority on the agenda of the church, of uh, universities, of institutions, of schools yes. and colleges, yes. of yes. legislature. This will become such a priority that uh, resources will be mobilized budgets will be will be designed on the basis of this priority we declare it in the name of jesus yes, yes, Even yes, yes, as lord. we raise yes. up a righteous seed yes. in our yes nation, lord yes we lord. declare it tonight lord and we thank yes. you that you are with us we ask you to continue to lead the way lord and guide us as we commit ourselves and commend the giftings, the vision, the ideas, all that you have given to us, God, we submit it to your leadership and to your anointing. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, Lord, for the Burgesses. And thank you for this uh, platform through the Initiative yes. of Global Partners. Thank you for the work that you are accomplishing. Be thou exalted. Yes, yes. All the earth. Yes. We pray and we give you thanks. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank, Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Reverend Brown and yes. Reverend and Dr. Hallelujah. Oliver and Reverend Young. Hallelujah. Thank you all again. Thank Hallelujah. everyone who is listening, who has come on to this program tonight. And we pray that you will continue to keep the fire burning. Let's keep the fire burning. Let's yes. keep the vision and let's run with that vision that the Lord has placed on our hearts. Thank you so much. You know, yes. I, I, there was such an anointing tonight. Yes. I, I, you know, and God is downloading so much wisdom to take action. Yeah. Put the sessions, the work you have done over the last 10 years to put it practical, practically into programs and courses and um and um and we're going to work with the team so that yes. we can lead away and capture the vision and move with the vision just have to run with it and you know and keep the fire as, as, as you're praying reverend brown was praying I, I just see lord so many people being helped they need help mm -hmm. and god is god is god is going to do his work yes and god is going to bless us as we as we carry this vision and i i believe we i really believe that dr oliver has come on 
the kingdom at such a time as this. That's right. Amen. Um, it's not by accident. Nothing has happened by accident to right. God. And I thank God. And, and, and I'm looking at within, within the next next six months, we should have at least some certificate diploma courses I'm running. And we could do some professional development program for all yes. the parts. And not simply in, in, in our church we should lead, but in, in a in a region and trust that even Kyber Graduate School, Kyber Medium College will lead away, but you know, we you know, we just mobilize the associations and yes. God is gonna do what he has to do. And no devil in hell can stop him and we have to fight back. Amen. 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 And the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's thank right. you again. Tonight. That's right. Thank you again. And so, ladies and gentlemen, that is our program for tonight, tomorrow night. Peace, God. Left, right, left, say we're moving on together. Take we instructions from the Savior. Yeah, we're taking the gospel around the world. Right, left, we're moving left, right, round the world. Left, right, left, we're marching left, right, taking it round the world.